Good afternoon, Sports Insanity Network and the dugout of Millwood fans. It's Mark Oldup's guy Halpern, along with Charlotte Char Monkey Halpern, here with the guys from the Sports Insanity Network, the face turn group guys who are able to be here today. So I'm very thankful of that. We have Mike the Pun Master Rifkin and Nate. I was just married Moser. Congratulations again on that, Nate. Thank you. You're welcome. So what are, what are we doing here? As always, the one of one does case breaks. We do stuff on Fanatics Live. And we've done our baseball breaks. We've had a football break. We've even had a basketball break. We have not had a hockey break. And that's what these guys special in. Mind you, my knowledge of hockey is being dragged to the games because I was never a hockey guy. I was baseball, football, basketball. Yeah, I was never into hockey. Okay. Golf, yeah. But it's good to have guys who professionalize in hockey and know all these sports and know these players because – I wouldn't know if any of these guys could skate or shoot a lick. So the fun part is the monkey is going to get the card name. These guys have the pictures and she will do her best. And then Mike and Nate's going to give about a minute and a half about each player. All right. You ready, Monk? Yeah. I have not seen a single card. That's the point. I think I said seen. <laughs> I said seen. Seen. That's fine. Okay, and, monkey. Um, but for those of you who watched our last record... I, I have unsprained my finger, but I but I have now cut myself with a butter knife. Information that was so needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, into the cards we go. Uh, you can pick it up. No, it's not going to damage. Okay. No, uh, I'm looking. This is a... I'll hold it. Then? This is a... I'm trying to read the number. Okay. <laughs> this is a 622-799. This guy is Jonathan Fancyev. Okay, I'm just going to take Okay. So we have a Jonathan God. Kovacek. Am I close? Kovacevic? Kovacevic. That's why. I wasn't even close. Oh, is it close? It looks like all. defensive men for the Montreal Canadiens. All right, guys. What do we got here? Mike, you can go first. Another young defense with six goals, 13 points for the Canadiens this year. Uh, it, look, Nate, and, and by the way, can I spoil something for a second? Sure. Please. There's going to be a lot of Canadians, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Z and Tim, we are not doing this on purpose to you, Z and Tim, as Charlotte's got parent. Yeah. So we're not we're not we're not having heart attack here. No. Yeah, so. We're not making fun of the Montreal Canadians, and we're not making fun of any Canadian. Yeah, so Kovacevic's part of that long term rebuild yeah. that's been going on in Montreal. Yeah. If and... we go oh, ahead, Nate. No, oh, no, um... Nate, go ahead. Yeah, so so originally started out with like in the uh, Winnipeg Jets system and uh, just uh, like, I guess for whatever reason, um, and we have a cat making an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> you almost had a cat catastrophe. <laughs> um, it, with, with Winnipeg, uh, he really kind of was just in like the minors for a lot of the time. So he never really got like a big chance to be, like a call up for Winnipeg only ended up playing like a few games for them, but um, you know, has gotten, you know, an opportunity. It's like when you're trying to break into the NHL, you know, I mean, you might not make it on your first team, but you know, you, you find a situation that works for you and that's what he did. So he's been in Montreal for a couple seasons now and has been able to play a lot more games, gotten a lot more games under his belt. And um, you know, we'll see, you know, if he gets more of an increased role as Montreal kind of builds more towards, you know, becoming, you know, hopefully a playoff team. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, you know, he scores. He's, you know, like I said, a defenseman. And, um, you know, I mean, he, he, he will hopefully be a nice uh, depth guy for their blue line. Okay. What did you want to say, Monk? If we were making fun of any Canadians, we would lose our job. Yeah, probably, especially in hockey realms. <laughs> yeah, number two. Oh, this isn't. It looks like the same person. Um, this is a three hundred twelve out of seven hundred ninety nine. This is Jordan Harris from the Montreal Canadiens. All right, 
Uh, you guys break it down. Again, My, do you want me to go first? Yeah, or you go, go for it. it. You go. Yeah, he so, went last time. So, <laughs> so uh, with Harris, he was drafted uh, during the 2018 draft. Um, and he's only been with Montreal. He hasn't, uh, been with like any other club yet. Uh, only Montreal, um, spent some time with Northeastern university. So, um, like a lot of players now it's becoming a lot more common to get drafted to an NHL team and then maybe go to a college program. Uh, you know, junior hockey is one pathway to get good, but, uh, college is also another, uh, pretty solid way after you're drafted to, to make, you know, grow your game, make an impact, and uh, become a better player once you hit the NHL. And fortunately for Harris, once he got out of Northeastern University, um, he's really kind of only been with the NHL, hasn't really played uh, any games in the AHL yet. But, um, you know, and, you know, I mean, he's, he's another guy who's young and, uh, you know, hopefully will be a solid upcoming player for them. Very cool. Since a theme with Montreal, Jordan Harris, Cole Caulfield, amongst others, going the college route as opposed to the junior route. But again, okay. another guy, three goals, 14 points on the season last year. Again, Montreal is this young, up and coming team, and see what happens with that young nucleus. Okay. Keeping our trend with the Canadians. <laughs> Arbor. Oh, don't worry. I'm still trying to figure out the name. Come on. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get this. Uh, I can't. I know I can't, but I'm having fun watching her try. Arbor. She got the first part right. We know that. It's not even Arbor Day. <laughs> hey, take a shot. Hey, Arbor. Arbor, we know the first name is Arbor. It's, it's wrong. Oh, okay. Then listen to your Uncle Nate. So I actually looked up the uh, pronunciation. Thank <laughs> you. Um, it, well, Mike, do you, Mike, do you want to try it before I... Uh, no, go for it. Just say it. Um, it, it looks like it, it's pronounced Jackai. Oh, okay. Arbor Jackai. Looks like a defensive that's how it for looks. the cable. Yeah, so... <laughs> Just no, reminds no, no. me of the pronunciation guide at Oswego before the hockey. <laughs> so <laughs> don't mess them up. Yeah. This one is numbered 153 out of 799. Okay, how many are, are numbered out of 99? A lot of them. Okay. What else do we got on yeah, this wonderful gentleman that I'm not going to butcher his name anymore? More of your stand-up kind of defense, but physical at the point of attack. We'll jump into the play at a couple of goals uh, last season, 10 points, but 23 years old. So, again, a lot of room to grow on a Montreal team. We're going to keep saying it as long as you bring it up. <laughs> they're young, and they're getting better under my guy, Marty St. Louis. Okay. Yeah, and uh, played junior hockey with the Kitchener Rangers, which, I mean, if you, like, looked up that program, that team just in the Ontario Hockey League, a lot of famous guys out of there. Um, I can't name any particularly off the top of my head, but, I, just, I mean, I remember just seeing some of their alumni, like some of the names. They're a program that's been around for a really long time, so you know they have a nice history, um, as does Montreal themselves with how historic they are as an organization show. So, but... Um, yeah, just, a, I mean, Mike said it best, you know, just a younger guy playing defense. He's only been with Montreal at this point in time. Um, this past season also spent some time in the AHL with the uh, Laval Rocket, I think is how you, is it Laval, how you pronounce Laval. it? Laval. Um, so, you know, we'll see, you know, if he can maybe s stay permanently up in this upcoming season with Montreal or, you know, maybe he'll split the season with the AHL again, but Again, again with Montreal, as Mike said, and I'll, I'll uh, apologies for being repetitive, just a young team, um, a lot of guys that are just trying to make a name for themselves and uh, grow the game, and, uh, you know, hopefully they'll be uh, a solid core. That's one thing that's nice about having a lot of younger players on your team is that they get chemistry and they get to know each other, and if 
you know, things work out, they'll be with each other for a really long time, which only builds better chemistry only, you know, you know, this guy's going to go over there, you know, he's going to go here, you know, I mean, that's how you see some of the best goals are no look passes where it's like, I know that the puck is going to go on this guy's stick because I've been playing with this guy for like seven seasons. You know, I can back pass the puck to him. And I know he's going to be there. So, but uh, yeah, so young team and another player who could very well be a key part of the blue line on that. Mike? No, listen, we, we're, we keep reiterating the same yeah. thing. Right, no, just, yeah, just making sure we if I'm making sure we have time for each person to talk. That's all. Yeah. Yep. 14 out of 15. This is 14 out of 15. This is a 14 out of 15 card. Ooh. Yahoo! No more 799s. <laughs> we have Cole Perfetti. Did I say oh, that? that's good pronunciation. You yeah, nailed this, it. Yeah, this is um former first round pick, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, tenth overall with the Jets in yeah. the twenty in the twenty twenty draft. Uh spent some time uh with the Saginaw Spirit in the OHL. Um has mainly been uh in the AHL since he got drafted. Uh has spent the last couple seasons. Uh the 2022-23 season, he was fully with Winnipeg. And uh, same thing this past season. Um, played the most amount of games uh, this past season. Played in 71 games. Had 19 goals, 19 assists. Uh, this is the guy I remember during his draft year being talked about, you know, as, as one of, uh, you know, a really solid forward that whoever was going to draft him was going to get a really nice talent. Um, you know, and he's just working his way up as well. And I, you know, I mean, I, Mike, I don't know if I would say he necessarily had a breakout season because he had eight more points than he did his first time. But, but I mean, he's definitely like a future key contributor, you know, could very well be a very solid talent for Winnipeg uh, going forward. Yeah, career high, 19 goals, 38 points this year. I kind of wonder if they kind of see him in a bigger role. That's why we're seeing the Nikolai Ehlers rumors coming out. Yeah. Right. So if you trade a Nikolai Ehlers, maybe that spots something for Cole Perfetti. But let's be honest, though, Nate, and I, I know Mark's here, but he, he you know, isn't big well, on this. He, Cole Perfetti hasn't had to be that guy for this reason. You're right. Winnipeg still has Mark Shifley. They still have Kyle Connor. You know, up until this season, they had Pierre-Luc Dubois. So now you're going to need this young player to kind of step into place. And look, he took a step with the 19 goals. What's the next step? Get him over 20. Right. And you mentioned the Ehlers thing, and we'll actually see if that happened, that trade actually happens or not. I could see that maybe be a draft move, maybe draft day move. Um, but for sure, I mean, if that happens, you know, we'll cover it here on the, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, the podcast, but um, yeah, well. you mentioned, and, and I want to talk about too, cause they traded Dubois to the Kings mm -hmm. and they got a lot of, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to look up real quick. Just. They have who, Velarde. Yeah. Do they have everyone still from that trade or did they lose anybody? I don't think they've lost anybody yet. Yeah. Cause uh, you know, I mean, that was a thing too. When they got all those players back, I'm like, well, that's a lot of guys to fit on your team after, you know, by trading a guy, you know, who was a significant contributor is Dubois. But, you know, that obviously takes some spots away from some of your younger upcoming guys. But it's good that with Perfetti, I mean, he's he's getting a bigger role. And then we'll see, obviously, with Evelers, which, again, I think pro there's probably a really good chance he gets moved. He's been talked about as getting traded for, like, a couple seasons now. So we'll see if it actually happens. It seems like this might be the offseason that it does, but, uh, you know, that's something we'll keep an eye on. Mike. Yeah, no. Listen. Anything that he did not say. No, we need Colt. If you're a Winnipeg Jets fan and you're listening to this and Ehlers gets traded, the guy to keep an eye on is Perfetti. Take Whenever – Whenever he scores, this is going to be really cheesy. Whenever he scores, throw confetti for perfetti. Hey, there we go. And perfection. Now, mind you that 
all the cards that I got were from three different teams. So we're going to have some repeat names just because we got some rookies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But we'll see if Jordan, if it's Jordan, if Charlotte uh, remembers how. Okay, I made a mistake. <laughs> I was looking at the damn card, Redhead. We'll see if Charlotte can, if can remember some of the harder ones. Christy, where do you get a J? The one card that's in my hand. That's why. We have another Jordan Harris. Now, is there something else on Jordan Harris now, mind you, that we haven't said? Jordan Harris, don't commit a crime. We've got multiple cards on you. <laughs> yeah, right now we have Jordan Harris' signature. So if he decides to sign his name, shoot somebody, and run, we can match it up. <laughs> what do you say we could use that in a crime? Um, yeah, I was about to yeah. say that any PD can call me. We have direct signature verification. Um, I guess one thing that I will say is uh, that we didn't mention, obviously we talked about him going to Northeastern University, but uh, he also spent like a brief amount of time, brief amount of time playing for the Youngstown Phantoms in the United States Hockey League. Uh, only played in five games for them um, and had an assist. So um, the USHL, for those who don't know, it's the United States Hockey League. And um, that's just another avenue, like I said. I mean, the OHL, the Ontario Hockey League, Western Hockey League, and Quebec Major Junior Hockey League are the main ones up in Canada that players can play in. But the USHL um, is is another league, uh, just with different teams around in the U.S. Um, and some uh, players, you know, are famous from coming from there. I, the United States development team is part of that league as well. So a lot of players come from that program that are making JT significant. Miller. Austin Matthews, Jack Eichel, Patrick Kane, to name a few. So, I mean, it's... Uh, See, Patrick Kane, at least I've heard of him. Yes, yes. And, uh, I mean, still, we'll see where he goes, too. These are, like, nice little spoilers here. Or spoilers, nice little uh, foreshadowing for when we talk about free agency in, like, another couple weeks. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we'll see where he goes. No number on it. The last one also didn't have a number. This one is also outnumbered. Not numbered. That's what it meant. Um, Can she get it right this time? Because she just had it. <laughs> you know the first name. Okay. <laughs> Nate, would you like to hit us with the pronunciation again? So, yes. So, it's uh, Arbor Jagai. Jagai. I was no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just... Listen, Charlotte, don't feel bad. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to, after we're done recording this episode, the next time I say his name, I'm going to have to look up how to spell it or how to say it again because I, I, I <laughs> yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's not. Ha- Listen, hockey names are the most fun, but this is egregious, Arbor. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the fun part about this podcast is listening to me mess up. <laughs> All right. So we know Arbor plays for the Canadians. We know he's part of a young building core. <laughs> is there something else about this guy that stands out? Physical. Okay. He's a physical defenseman. Uh offensive game's not really there. But listen, when you play defense, he you need a guy on the blue line who's willing to throw the body. That's Arbor. One thing that needs to be mentioned about him that I actually was going to mention the first time we talked about him is he was not drafted. Uh, oh, he really? Was drafted in uh, multiple drafts. He was uh, eligible in both 2020 and 2021. Uh, did not get picked in either of those. And um, for those who don't know, uh, you, I think you have three drafts to get selected, and if not, you okay. become a free agent that you have to uh, sign with. But um, he basically – so he didn't go in the 2020 or 2021 drafts. He ended up receiving a training camp invitation from Montreal and uh, prior to the 2021-2022 season, and then he ended up uh, you know, impressing management, and that was how he got his role. So – you know, to all aspiring hockey players who, you know, might be working towards getting drafted, if you're watching this, like, just because you don't get drafted, like, getting drafted's cool. Like, I've been to an NHL draft, which was fun to attend, but um, just because you don't get drafted does not mean that you're not going to become an NHL hockey player. It's been done before. It's done every time. Um, go- Give us a reference. 
who who has gone undrafted who's had an outstanding career? Um, I think one what well at least one that Oh, you're talking about just undrafted in general? Yeah, just undrafted in general. Not just on the Canadians. I'm just saying Let me let me double check this name because I'm pretty sure he wasn't drafted, but um I think the most famous example, yeah, is a guy who um who Mike name dropped earlier, but Martin St. Louis. It's probably okay, the right. best example of a guy who was not drafted. Um, thousand point getter, Hall yeah. of Famer. Hall of Famer in 2018, current head coach of Montreal. Um, you know, and that and he's another example of a guy. Not only did he not get drafted, but he went to the Calgary Flames his first season for his first uh NHL team. Uh didn't really fit in there. Okay. I think they may, you know, for whatever reason, it just did not work out between him and the club. And Tampa ended up getting their hands on him, and he became who he's known as today. Again, Hockey Hall of Famer. You know, it's, it just goes to show you, and, and I've talked about this in articles too, I don't understand the whole size conversation where it's like, oh, he's a, you know, he's a small player, you know, and it gets brought up every draft. It's 2024. We don't need to talk about how players are smaller and how that's a disadvantage because it's and he's I mean now look at his size he's five foot eight five foot eight and that's like considered small and oh guys I know him, I'm that tall it, it, guys like him Brian Gianta Nathan Gerby just a few that I mentioned a smaller guy Zuccarello no I've heard of him too had, still had solid NHL careers. So that the, the size conversation's overblown and it's it just keeps happening and it's like when are we going to stop having this be considered a disadvantage because it's not. It, it, it's the further the point that I just want to make this clear like the draft doesn't end after the first round. You're right on the undrafted players, but you get gems in the seventh round, the sixth round. Henry Lundquist was a seventh round pick. Pekka Ryan Ryan, was a late round pick. Well, Ryan Miller was a fifth I've round pick. Hunter. Pavel Datsuk and Henrik or Henrik Zetterberg, one of them was a later round pick. Both, both were, I believe. Great job on that one, Kenny Holland. Two of my numbers. favorites. Okay, my- well, if you're saying five foot eight is small, I'm the smallest one in my class, and I'm four foot three. Well, we're talking just in terms of hockey. Yeah, just turn to hockey players. Not, not just in, in, in life. <laughs> uh, otherwise, Hornswoggle would be a very disappointed individual. Ready? Right, let's move on to our next cut. <laughs> All right. This is easy. This one is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, it's not easy. This one's not numbered. This is Tyler. Berzui? Close. Bertuzzi. Close. Bertuzzi. That we were close. Good job. Yeah. For the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, All right, let's play- talk about this guy. Well, play for the Maple Leafs this year. 21 goals, 43 points. And another guy, Nate, unrestricted free agent. Yeah. There have been talks that the Leafs want to bring him back. Yeah, and he's but, he's kind of traveled a little bit all over the the Atlantic Division because he started his career with the Detroit Red Wings, which is the, the card that is here, um, but then went to the Boston Bruins as a trade deadline acquisition last season. Um, it was became a fan favorite pretty quickly with uh, the Bruins organization, but they were not able to keep him just because of cap issues. Uh, so goes to Toronto. Same thing. I mean, we'll see what his contract ends up looking like. We'll see if he stays with Toronto. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is probably so far out of all the players my favorite card uh, that we've got. Okay. Um, he actually uh, – his uncle used to play in the NHL, too, uh, by the name of Todd Bertuzzi. Um, okay. Actually played, spent some time in Detroit, too. I don't know if they played together briefly before Todd retired, but um, – I, re- I remember seeing Todd Bertuzzi's name, his uncle, uh, when he played uh, played for a bunch of different teams. Uh, but his nickname when he played was Big Bird Bertuzzi. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, but uh, but Tyler's Tyler's really great. Um, you know, wherever he goes, he's going to be. I mean, he's going to be a great asset. Um, again, we'll probably cover where he goes when that finally happens. 
Uh, so, but yeah, him. anyone who gets him, whether he resigns in Toronto or he goes elsewhere, uh, they're getting a really good talent. And he'll, he, I mean, I don't, he's still what, late 20s? I mean, he's not like 30 yet, is he? I don't think. I don't believe so, but I will double check that. Um, but yeah, he'll be uh, he'll be a solid acquisition wherever wherever he goes. And Mike. the other part about Bertuzzi is, is he does every. He, he's the kind of guy who does everything. Yep. Uh, okay. He's twenty nine. He'll be thirty next February. But yeah, he, he does a little bit of everything. He gets net front, gets up in your face, twenty goals on the year. Wouldn't mind having that on your team. Not at all. Her, not numbered. This one. Okay, the rest not numbered? No, the last one is. Uh, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Marco Ro, Rossi. Wait, what? Rossi. 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 Mm. Of the Minnesota Wild. That's, that's me first this time, right? Yeah, sure. go for it. So this is uh, – we talked about the 2020 draft uh, before. This is another guy. Uh, he was the ninth overall selection uh, in the 2020 draft. I remember a lot of – growing up a Sabres fan, I remember <laughs> with this draft a lot of Sabre fans wanted to get Rossi. Uh, we ended up taking Jack Quinn instead uh, before. I, I'd taken a look just to see the selections here. Um, yeah, we had the eighth overall pick, and we took Jack Quinn instead. Um okay. It was actually a teammate of uh, Rossi's on the Senate on the uh, Ottawa 67s. I almost said Senators, uh, the Ottawa yeah. 67s in the OHL. But um, Rossi is um, a player who has kind of had some bad luck um, when it comes to like injuries and stuff like that. I don't know if he had an illness in there too, um, but he, um, you know, it took him a little bit of time to finally break into the NHL uh, with the Wild and actually get significant playing time. Um, good news for him was that he was able to play in all 82 games for the Minnesota wild this year. Um, he had 21 goals, 19 assists for 40 points, uh, previous year. Um, you know, he spent some, t he didn't really play a whole lot. This was really his first year in the NHL where he didn't have to split time in like the AHL. Um, so, and, and good for him, you know, the fact that he was able to make the wild, uh, a team with a lot of skill. Um, you know, a lot of great guys on that team. Uh, they, you know, they're building, they're trying to build something special over there, uh, in St. Paul, but, um, you know, Rossi, uh, you know, hopefully be one of those uh, offensive, uh, pieces that'll, uh, become, you know, one of their faces of the, uh, the team going forward. So, but, uh, good on him that he's healthy now producing pretty well for the wild and, uh, we'll see how he does next season for them. Mr. Ripken. I've made fun of the Wild for a long time, mainly because they had these old guys and they weren't doing much. Marco Rossi, combine that with Kaprizov, yep. and a, another guy oh. whose card we have coming later. They're built, and Matt Boldy, another nice young piece to the puzzle, and th they're starting to gain traction with that young core. Because they bought out the contracts of Ryan Suter and Zach Parisi. So Rossi's a guy who hopefully for them continues to break out, kind of in a way Nate Boldy did have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, we talk about steals in a draft. I mean, Caprizo of the Wild was, you know, I mean, it, we talk about like what a 2015 NHL redraft would look like. He would probably be top 10. He might be like top five. Top five. For sure. Okay, yeah. and our last and final card for today, but Charlotte looks like she has a question for them. I don't have a question. Oh. Um, on the back of the card, something just to add on. It says, Rossi record three times to record his first AH, A, AHL L hat trick, and I was 6-2 to, to, to win, win over host San Diego on March 18, 2023. That's a pretty interesting piece of information. As mm -hmm. most of the, uh, as these guys know, but Charlotte does not a hat trick. And if anybody else doesn't know this, I actually had to make sure. No, just kidding. Hat trick is three goals in one game by one player. So he scored three goals in one game. Yeah. And, and, if I, and, ball, and then, then I need to leave the network. And and, and ju just to finish the, the thought there, 
Minnesota, uh, Iowa is Minnesota's American League team, also known as the Wild. And San Diego is the Anaheim Ducks AHL affiliate. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and in, in, uh, when they score, like when players score a hat trick in a game, like people will throw their hats onto the ice. And then I think they did, Mike, do they give them the like charity? I don't know what they do with the hats. I know they do something with teddy bears or something, right? Well, that's the, well, there the teddy is a bear teddy toss. bear toss. That, that is yeah, that's, I think that's for cancer, if I'm not that mistaken. That is for cancer awareness. Yeah, I remember uh, ESPN was showing uh, from years past uh, how many people, you know, would throw out or buy and whatnot. I thought it was pretty cool. The, yeah, the, and I, I just remember, I don't know if it was Oswego or if it was like an AHL game, but they people were throwing like big bears like that are like ginormous over the <laughs> People would miss, and then we they'd have had, to go. We to had the throw. teddy bear toss at us. We go. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. I remember being that. Was, I mean, I never got to be part of that, but I had to blow up over five hundred beach balls in one night, so we could set the record on the field. Smart idea. Yeah. Last that's one. Smart. Last one. All right, let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like she's had a hard time here. Go ahead. What he calls the shots. <laughs> All right. Joe Erickson? Yeah, you nailed it. You nailed it. Plays for the... I have no idea. The Wild. He plays for the Wild, and it's hard to see, but it's right in there. Oh! Just have to shine the light on it. (laughs) 22 out of 36. If I said... 35, most likely, but that's okay. Nobody's... That's a six. That's a six? Okay, fine. (laughs) <laughs> Joel Erickson of the Minnesota Wild. I can't speak for Nate, but I love Joel Erickson. Er- is, Joel is Erickson. He, yeah, is he is he the second best player on that team? Other he's than- the second best player on that team. Yeah. So he, who's the first then? Karel Kaprizov. Yeah. Oh, okay. Karel the Karel the Thrill. Okay, uh, that would have been easier to say, definitely. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, with, uh, with Erickson Eck, um, you know, it took him a little while to become an offensive contributor. Like, I mean, he would get your goals here and there. I mean, I look, I'm looking right now is 2018, 19 season. He only had 14 points in 58 games, seven goals, seven assists. The last, uh, few seasons, he's become more of a goal scorer for them. Uh, most recently, he just hit the uh, 30 goal mark this past season. First time he's hit 30 in his career. Um, 30 goals, 34 assists for 64 points in 77 games. Uh, last year, he had 23 goals, 38 assists for 61 points in 78 games. Uh, and he was very close in 2021 20, 22 to hitting 30 goals. He had 26. Um, but yeah, just a guy who, um, you know, they drafted him. They've been doing a lot of really good drafting lately. Erickson Eck, Kaprizov, as we mentioned, you know, these are the faces of the offense for Minnesota. And, you know, they're, I mean, they, they're still probably going to hit their prime. Like they probably haven't even hit their prime yet when, with goal producing and everything like that. So, you know, they, they very well could be a team on the rise. Uh, you know, well, I'm interested to see what they're going to do this off season. Uh, once that officially begins, uh, but yeah, they've uh, they, they've got a bright future ahead of them with a lot of these players they brought into the organization. Twenty seven years old fits right into that mold of that team. Again, kind of like Bertuzzi does a little bit of everything: PK, power play, blocks shots, wins faceoffs, just plays it the right way. Right. Big Joel Erickson Eck fan, and it's pretty wild, especially in Minnesota. It's and that very was all wild. Nine cards. Let's wrap this thing up. Yes, <laughs> yes, Jesus. So, I would like to thank Mike, the Pump Master Griffin, and Nate. I just got married, Moser, for taking time out of their busy day, along with their dads, giving them permission to come on and help us out here a little bit. Um, you can check out these guys on Breakaway Bandits who record. When do you guys record? We don't really have set dates. We yeah, there's not set dates. We'll record a post final podcast after the Stanley Cup final, yeah. and then we'll, we're working on something for free agency. There we go. Our old office man asks a question, and the awkward silence falls. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my God. Yes. Do not edit that out. I won't edit the second part out. Patch keep that part. <laughs> From Mark Oldoff, Sky Halpern, Charlotte Char, Monkey Halpern, Mike the Pun Master, Rifkin, Nate, I just got married, Moser. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to tune in to us at www.thesportsinsanitynetwork.com for all your blogs, vlogs, and any other thing you could possibly think about sports. We're doing. We're getting ready. We will be starting cooking here very soon as we will be doing our baseball stadium food podcast in which we start making stuff from the stadiums here in the house and see if we'll buy it and see how much broke I can get. Who heard it wrong? No, this man did not just get married. Nate did. Yes. No, but no, I didn't get just get married. Nate, Nate just got married. Yes, Nate, I just got married Moser. That's his nickname. <laughs> I just gave it to him three minutes ago. That's Nate. People know. Add it, add your, whatever. I'd like to thank you all. Please <laughs> tune in for more craziness with Charlotte when she does this. Go. Wonderful. Thank you all. And good night. Have a wonderful time. And we'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>